That was pre and post manufacture of what was getting done. I was phased out completely. And why do you believe you were phased out? Because I embarrassed the CEO. Hey everybody, this video I'm going to be examining uh, like the root causes, systemic causes, and the capitalist built-in uh, reasons why this stuff happened. As he said, he embarrassed his employer. He was the uh, engineer, the top engineer. And uh, when he got terminated, apparently someone in the comments said that he got sued by the owner of the company. And so the bottom line is we're going to go through some of the footage of what this guy has to say about it because he obviously knows more about it than me. But we are going to analyze the bigger picture because it's not just about the stupid idiots who drowned on that dumb thing. Uh, there's plenty of more worthwhile life that's been extinguished uh, in the time period, per, you know, since post-stupid uh, Titanic wreck face guy. Uh, the point is he was seeking profit, seeking self-fulfillment. Uh, uh, he wanted his ego to be kissed. And check out what this guy say here. On the Andrea Doria wreck. I didn't mean to. But there was an incident on the the Doria. Notice how like uh, he sort of has to treat the guy as like a grown up child who knows nothing, even though he's a subordinate. Uh, we're going to skip some of the boring crap, and um, I'll include more of the stuff that indicates actual power relations and stuff like that. Unfortunately, the CEO decided that. He wanted to take it down, I objected, because I know sometimes he could you know, do things to please himself. It wasn't good, and uh, at that point, it was unprofessional behaviour of him, he started to panic. And the first thing was, do we have enough life support on board? I was like, stop, of course we got enough life support. We need to get out here. When do you think the dive team could come to get us out? Stockton, please. Give me the controls, I'm going to get us out of this. We're stuck, we're stuck, we're stuck. Repeatedly, every time I went to take the controller from him, he pushed it further and further behind him, inside the submersible. So you see, this entrepreneur guy obviously thinks he's smarter than the people he hires to be smart and do the actual job. Let's hear some more from what the guy says, it's mad. Um, at that point, it went on and on and on. I'm looking up inside the upper hatch. I could see where there was fishing line draping over the top of the sub, all the metal rebar. There was debris everywhere. He never once got out the seat in the back of the sub to go and look at his surroundings. So I said, let's get a communications check. Also notice in capitalism how the person who's the uh, subordinate has to know more than the person who's the best because the best will batter them. And eventually it took one of the paying clients to turn around and Renata, who you're interviewing on Thursday, she shouted at Stockton to give me the effing controller. She had tears in her eyes. He leached around behind him. I was, I had my head up inside the tower, so I'm still looking at the wreck, and he clattered it off the right side of my head. The controller landed on the, the deck plate. One of the buttons came off, the robust PlayStation controller. I picked it up, repaired it, and had us out 10, 15 minutes. Motored away from the wreck, came away 50 meters using the sonar, turned us around, dropped down, and I said, that is what we're supposed to do. And at that point, he was upset. He said, I owe you one, anything I can do for you. We came back on board the ship, and uh, the divers had to reattach us onto the MSLRs once we recovered to the surface, because the deck skids were so badly damaged when he did the departing from the platform, because he did it incorrectly. And came back up on top, obviously, the paying clients, I know one of them was definitely a good friend of Stockton's. Uh, we had Renata and one of Renata's friends. So long story short, this guy's last day working was that day when he saved them all because the guy finally gave him the controller. Uh, it seems to me, you know, the system's pretty fucked, but let's hear some more. If he 
in any way had behaved like any other submersible pilot I know and looked at his surroundings, talked on the radio, you know, on the communications, let the top side know so there's an issue. He didn't do it. Um, and then because people were cheering and the passengers were obviously very grateful for what I did, which to me is just my job, at that point he stopped talking to me. And, uh, yeah. I would hate to be uh, that guy Stockton Rush's family, dude. Uh, because he treated that guy like he tr probably treats his wife. And I wouldn't want to be one of them. But that's just a case study in how money uh, will figure out how to accomplish what it wants. And in this case, they discarded this guy once they realized that his inconvenient assessment uh, would not make them money. And just went with somebody who would take the money and shut up and not think. Kind of like Boeing. It's also like how uh, people with businesses deliberately choose uh, people to do the accounting that are not really that smart. But will do the things the way they want it. Like Enron and WorldCom. Which crashed, you know, in the 90s or whatever, I think. I don't know. Whenever that happened, the 90s. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of late-stage capitalism proving to you that we should all treat each other equally. Uh, nobody should be bullied around by anybody in a position of authority. Peace, everybody.